closer to the center here. Oh, thank God we can see you this time. <laughs> Last time we came on in the beginning of blinding. <laughs> um, you know, I want to start first off here and ask you a few questions. Now, we have a reputation for being one of, I think, the most creative directors out there right now working with film. How on earth did you come up with the script for Dr. Vanessa's? This is, I'm going to reveal a secret that I've not uh, told her, but here's what happens. I went to bed at night, um, and as I was sleeping, apparently out of the woodwork came these little elves, and they had all these little pieces of paper they wrote you know, interesting open thoughts on, and then they put them in my shoes, and the next morning when I woke up, I tried to get my shoes on, so the stuff with papers, I opened them up, and there it was, the entire script, written by elves. <laughs> That is your answer. Do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> People have been more honest about how these things happen. People, the egos out there that came to write movies and make movies. No, movies are made by elves. Your friend by Friday. <laughs> now I know. You know, you, anyone who's a fan of your films, like the adventures of Ben Munchausen and Time Bandits, well, I think that they'd be able to draw some parallels, some similarities with those movies and this movie that we just saw this evening. But tell me, what is your fasc fascination with other realities? Oh, I think I just really try to describe the world as it really is, as opposed to the way you know, newspapers, television, and movies say it is. I mean, the world is a full, full of a million realities. It's which ones you choose to believe in, which ones you choose to follow. And I'm personally trying to encourage people to make their own reality. Don't fall into the trap that uh, either you know, television or, more interesting, more recently, Wall Street tells you. Wall Street tells you to believe in money and the fact that you can invest and get rich. <coughs> they lied to you. <laughs> there is no money. What happened to it? This is more magical than anything I've ever put on the film. Real life figures inspire the role of Dr. Francis? That's a cheeky question. That's not fair. Um, listen, we began this thing with a blank page. So, what better than trying to deal with your own personal history? Where, it, listen, anybody who's creative, anybody, whether you're a painter, a writer, filmmaker, musician, you want to meet people, you want to communicate, hopefully you think are ideas that are interesting and fresh and encourage them to think <clears throat> new and interesting ideas. And of course, none of you are as successful, and none of us who do that job are as successful as George Lucas or Spiel Steven Spielberg. So we live in a world where we feel we're not reaching as many people as we ought. So we make movies and then we complain about making movies. <laughs> Um, I just want to talk to the, audi the audience quickly and ask them what they thought of the incredible performance of uh, Mr. Heath Ledger. I've got to say something. We only, we, we only saw the tip of Heath's iceberg of talent. I've never worked with anybody quite as extraordinary as Heath. I mean, I've worked with the most wonderful people on the planet. He had something so special because he was a wonderful actor who was fearless, who went wherever the character needed to go, but it wasn't an erotic quality in him. It was just the sheer playfulness, the sheer joy of inhabiting another character. Um, and, and on top of that, as a human being, he was one of the most generous, giving, supportive people I've ever met. And the most mysterious quality of the piece. This is a man who died at 28, but he had, anybody who was close to him said, this is a wise old soul. I used to say, it's part aboriginal, he has to be. This is not your normal white bread human being. This is a guy who's been around for hundreds of years, so my secret is, he didn't die young. He died, he was probably 253 years old when he died. There was something extraordinary about this man, and it's one of the great tragedies that we are not going to be able to enjoy and experience and see what he was capable of. He, 
because I felt there was no limit to his talent. So I hope that at least the film we have put on here shows you a little bit of Heath and doesn't let him be forgotten forever. Can you quickly just go through some of the steps that you had to take then to do Heath's untimely death, which happened during filming? How were you able to piece the film, the rest of the film, together? I was, the difficult thing was getting one's um, brain into gear to say that we can't salvage this movie. That was the hard part. Once I got onto that, I realized it's actually all there. Uh, the principle of going through the mirror and being part of somebody else's imagination, which may be stronger, suddenly was a solution. Because uh, with Johnny Depp, when he goes through, as she says, I always dreamed you would look like this. She was dreaming of Johnny Depp, not Heath Ledger. <laughs> and that gave us the answer. And Heath's character goes through three times. So I knew the three actors. I called a lot of people out there that were close to Heath because I only called people who knew him, loved him, were part of some part of the family. Uh, and uh, some great people wanted to help but couldn't because they were occupied. But Johnny Collin and Judith you know, kind of miraculously were available. And we were able to do it down to their schedules and ours. And when I look at it, when I think of the other people that were possible, we ended up with the best trio that was available, or even ever possible. Now, they, they were incredible. The, what was so brave about each of them was that they arrived with no time to rehearse. They had to just leap into this thing. And that's why it was important that they knew who he was, knew what he was about, how he thought. And I think, when you see it on, on the screen, it's seamless. It's like, in a strange way, this film was written to be done this way. Uh, there are film gods. These are the things you learn to believe in after a while. And they're making the movies, not me, not the people around us. They're doing the job, and we're just working for them. I don't know who they are, I don't know where they live, but uh, I know they're out there. Um, what is going to come out of this incredible mind next? What's next for you? Um, holiday? Well deserved. <laughs> Well, we're resurrecting now uh, the man who killed Don Quixote for the fourth time. And, uh, and I've got the most wondrous actor to play Don Quixote, and that's Robert Duvall, who is one of the bricks. And he not only is a great actor, he can ride horses, and best of all, he tangos. <laughs> We cannot wait to see what comes out of you next. We can't wait for Don Quixote, and we want to thank you so much for being here. Your mind is incredible. Your movies are simply amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me thank you.